Kids with Mahari. Uh, it's Rowan and I got back from the food pantry. I haven't done one of these um, food pantry, food bank, whatever videos uh, in a while, and that's because I have a surplus of canned goods over in my corner there, and uh, I figured I would need to pare them down um, through the summer, you know, to a more manageable level, and the same, like, they, they give out meat, as we remember from the last such video that I did. They give out meat, which had been occupying my freezer big time, and the reason it takes me a while to go through meat, even though I do eat meat, just not necessarily every day, uh, is just because, um, a lot of the cuts that they give, it's... It's not the most convenient for me to use right away, so I, I just, like, I don't know, it sits in my freezer, um, taunting me, mocking me, until I can think of something to do with it. So, next day, I'm allowed back, just because, you know, they like to keep it every four weeks to the one up at, uh, St. JTB. is uh, the 26th of September, so about four weeks, and, ah, uh, I, yes, I just went in my bib overalls because, oh, and my jacket, I might want to steam this. I keep thinking to myself, I should do a video about denim care and, um, and maybe do a short series on, or an informal series anyway, about, uh, jeans and denim and all of that, just because I notice I have a lot of jeans. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that soon, so let's go through what I got. So, as I'd said before, um, in previous videos, uh, they have the back, but for those of you who haven't seen these before, hi kitty. We're now just playing around with the stuff in the cart. So, you queue up at about 6. They open the doors at 6.30. Uh, some people are there a little before 6. Some don't come until just after 6.30, but as long as they have uh, plenty of everything in the um, out for everybody, uh, they will distribute for as long as they have stuff. So. Uh, there's the, there's all the bags, like big ass paper bags full of stuff for people. And then they've got bags of produce and a couple of fresh bakery breads. Usually fresh, usually bakery kinds of breads. And then there's the back table, um, or at least the table behind you after you, after you, uh, so first you sign in and then you sit and wait. And then they call you up to go to the second table and then there's the table behind you and they say, um, Anywhere between one and three items. This month it was two items, so I grabbed myself a big-ass bag of dried cranberries, Ocean Spray brand, and a big-ass box of ramen-style noodles. And it is just the noodles, so the noodles are wheat, and I can have those, because I can't have those, like, little, like, 20 cents a brick things, um, but a lot of the a lot of the cheaper brands don't. Sometimes there's soy flour in the noodles as well as in the little um, sodium heavy flavor packets. So that's what's going on. So I had to grab the noodles. And I grabbed the cranberries. This month's bread we've got ooh moulin français, old world style. Uh, we've got let's see. Contains wheat. May contain nuts produced on equipment that processes. Da, 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 da. And yes, it is indeed simply just wheat. I can have the bread. This needs to go in the freezer because I still have a few sandwiches worth here and I don't want this to turn on me. So next is the produce. So we have a big bag of mixed produce. We've got some apples. Ooh, we've got a plum. We've got a you, I think those are radishes. Yeah, that is a radish of some variety. Got some tomatoes. We've got one thing of iceberg lettuce and another spare iceberg lettuce. And I know it's iceberg. I know it's like practically water, but oh well. They asked me if I wanted another thing of lettuce, and I figure, sure, why not? Now we've got meat. We've got... A big, okay, let's see, glatt kosher meat, ooh, uh, bone-in beef ribeye steak, still frozen, not sure what I'm going to do with that, just, oh my gosh, we have a big-ass ham loaf, these things are so full of salt, they end up 
like lasting a lot longer, like even after I've thought it out and cut it in half to put one half in a casserole and then the other half for what the fuck ever, maybe a second casserole, I don't know. It, it's just so sodium laden, it ends up lasting a lot longer than I expect it to, which scares me. And we have, this has soy in it, son of a bitch. But it is seasoned taco meat. So let's see, I can't have this, I will, oh yeah, yeah, wheat and soy protein. So, yeah, I definitely cannot have this. If it was just like soybean oil, which usually lacks the protein associated with a soy intolerance, I would have just taken a chance on it, but I'm gonna see if a friend of mine wants to take this off my hands. So, now the big ass paper bag of full of stuff. We have Girl Scout cookies, and I cannot have these because soy. So, these are going to a friend of mine because she's having some boyfriend issues, and chocolate is good for that. Uh, veggie Pops Sour Cream and Onion Super Snacks, Organic Dried Vegetable Snack. Contains almonds. Yes, I can have these. Sweet. Or, I guess, savory. Looks like they're going to be more savory on a snack. Hamburger Helper Crunchy Taco. This is... Okay, yes, this is one of the ones I can have. It's got the little warning, may contain traces of, but it's got no direct soy in there. Wait. Kids water with zero sugar, berry flavor. Okay. Well, that's okay, I guess. Uh, box of elbow macaroni. Because, sure. <sighs> what else am I going to make a ham casserole with? Probably egg noodles, but... Ah, uh, Pappy's Pantry. Grower-owned. Dark red kidney beans. Dry beans, always good to have around. Especially when your food stamps allowance gets borked up, because... Sure. Ah, uh, sliced peaches. Oh, in juice. I don't like my canned fruits in syrup. I really don't. It's just, it's so sweet, it's disgusting when they're in syrup, I think, anyway. Some cheap-ass macaroni and cheese. I've had this brand before. It is not great, but it gets the job done. Ah, and we've got shelf-stable milk. Dairy, of course, um, but, you know, it can be in this... Not quite indefinitely, but a lot longer than the sell-by date here. So, I mean, yeah, it says best if used by, but, um, you know, open it up, smell it. If it does not smell right, then throw it out, you know. But, yeah, like, a lot of canned goods and shelf-stable items, they're good for a lot longer than people assume. Like, the sell-by date is not... Uh, it's called an expiration date because there are certain things that you absolutely do not want to eat after a certain date. Um, but, like, like milk, milk is one of those things, especially after, you know, especially if it's fresh, you know, fresh refrigerated and all of that. Um, especially, you know, um, milk will turn on you very quickly. Um, cheese, not so much. Cheese is edible a lot longer than a lot of people think. Um, and, um, so, yeah, but, uh, but yeah. <laughs> My dad was born, like, just after the Depression. His, and he's, like, number three out of four. And the only, and he was the only boy. Much like myself. Wait, what the? Oh, my, uh, my toast tongs fell. And a big ass can of quick oats. I'm gonna make all the cookies. Because I don't like eating oatmeal as is. Chicken noodle soup. And this is a Campbell's, and I believe, I don't believe I can have this. Chicken stock. Ferris nice and chicken meat, chicken broth, cornstarch, modified food starch. Dehydrated chicken broth. Oh, yep, soy protein isolate. Can't have this. It's going to... A friend of mine. Can of potatoes. 
can of tomato sauce, can of low sodium cut green beans, one of many jars of peanut butter around here. The phone is resting on top of a jar of peanut butter that I'm working on. I will have enough peanut butter for the rest of my natural life thanks to this. <laughs> Certainly enough to make plenty of cookies and shit with. Can of whole kernel sweet corn. Can of pear slices in pear juice concentrate. Oh. At least it's not syrup. Be it light or heavy. And an ominous can of pork with juices. Ah. And it does. Oh, this is great. So, okay, this pork is fully cooked in its own juices and is ready to use. Cut, use cut-up pork for salads, and, like, cut-up is hyphenated. Use cut-up pork for salads, sandwiches, soups, stews, barbecues, spaghetti sauce, meat pies, casseroles, tacos, or over-egg noodles. Use juices and fat from canned pork to flavor cooked vegetables, soup, or gravy. Store unopened can in cool, dry place after opening store used pork in this can, cover and refrigerate. I don't know why it says to store it in a can, because that's something my mother always told me never to do. Uh, same with my stepmother, too, but... Oh, and we've got a dent. So, yeah, this was kind of a light load um, for how it usually often is, but they uh, they do tend to uh, be a bit more... Uh, they, ha they tend to have a whole lot more during the winter and I know there are cultural reasons for that and everything. So, yeah, that was that was pretty quick. <laughs> uh, and I didn't have a lot to say. And it looks like a friend of mine is trying to um, remind me or ask me where I am for game night. So I'm going to go tell her that I had to do this instead. So, yeah, my, uh, my food stamp allowance got borked up. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the fact that, uh, that what, that my... So, okay, I got this thing in the mail, and it said, oh, have us these, uh, these proofs about your bank accounts by, uh, by July 22nd. And I didn't get this, and so July 22nd this year was on a Monday. I got this exactly the Friday of before. So I got this on the 19th, and according to the, um, the web panel, like, it wasn't even sent out until, like, the 18th, I think, so, I mean good on them for getting it to me really fast, but, uh, oh wait, no, I think I got that on the 20th, yeah, I got that on the 20th, um, that's Saturday, yeah, because <sighs> I did stop, uh, because I was, uh, I was hoping for, I was, uh, checking for birthday stuff, so I did go to the post office that weekend on a Saturday, and so yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, so I didn't even get that, like, it was dated, like, the 18th or something, and I got it on the Saturday, the 20th, and it was supposed to be there on Monday the 22nd, and it's my birthday weekend, so I'm busy all that weekend. Like, I went to the concert, and then I had Snoo Snoo, and then I had to make cupcakes, and I made, like, 50 cupcakes. And then what happened? And I had to make the frosting for the cupcakes, because coconut pecan, and soy allergy. <sighs> and... Then, like, the next couple of days were busy with literally other things that were time-sensitive. So, what ended up happening <laughs> was it didn't even get there until, like, the following Thursday, just because this is just, like, I had to go to the library to get stuff printed out, and just because I operate about six hours behind the rest of the world, um, you know, in my time zone anyway. So... I, uh, you know, I'm up at noon and in bed at 4 a.m. I, I operate about, you know, between 5 and 6 hours later than everybody else in the area. So, yeah, I didn't even get that out there until that Thursday. And, you know, I said, yeah, I know this was supposed to be there on, this is supposed to be here on Monday, but, you know, <laughs> I didn't even get it until Saturday. Like, it, it wasn't even dated until that Thursday, so... Like, unless you wanted teleportation or a time machine or some shit, there's no way this was going to get here on time either way. Like, <laughs> there was no way it was going to get there on the 22nd. Like, 
you know, it's here on Thursday. So I'm hoping it's just something like that. I went down to the DHS office today because today was the first day I was able to do that. Oh, so, yeah, um, I was supposed to get my food stamps allowance refilled on Monday the 19th. That did not happen. And um, I did get a deposit on the 3rd, which is not the day I'm supposed to get a deposit. And I got that deposit was for $106 exactly. And my next deposit is for another $106 exactly on the 19th of September. So right now, like, like, I had no idea what this $106 deposit was. I didn't even get a letter saying I was going to get this $106 deposit on the 3rd until, like, the 7th of the month. So that, okay. And it didn't, and, and the letter didn't even explain anything, um... It's somewhere on my coffee table, but it just said something about, like, you know, you'll get this deposit on this day, and that was about it. It didn't explain anything. Uh, it said something about, like, you know, your standard, like, 30 days to, or 90 days or something to appeal, something, 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 and I'm just like, okay, is this just, like, a one-time thing because... I don't know, I, I was assuming it was due to Medicaid. Like, my Medicaid finally got turned back on. Um, so, my state health coverage. So, I already had the federal, the Medicare from Social Security. That's great. So, now I've got my state Medicaid turned back on. Um, you know, like, full coverage, not just, um, you know, uh, medication uh, copay allowance sort of deal. I've got my full coverage Medicaid turned back on in addition to my full coverage Medicare. So, <coughs> excuse me. So that's good. Uh, so yeah, I was assuming this like $106 deposit on the 3rd for reasons this letter did not even explain. It just says, you know, this is going to happen on this day, and that's about all we're going to tell you right now. You've got like, you know, your standard 90 days. Burp, 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 burp. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, I, um, I went down there today, and she said, oh, well, it looks like your income changed. I'm like, no, it hasn't. And she says, well, it says here about the thing, you've got the, your Social Security, um, disability, you know, and then you've got your survivor's benefits. I'm like, yeah, I've been getting survivor's benefits after my mother died, like, five years ago. <laughs> like, I have updated this. Like, I, 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 I scan in and send the proof of income every January, like I'm supposed to, when there's the cost of living increase, um, you know, something like 2% or something, I don't know, it's not very much, but it's, it's just enough to kind of get by, and I scan in every September when, you know, there's the annual $5 rent increase on this unit, so, um, so yeah, I'm just like, I, I do this every year. I update you every year. She's like, well, maybe it was an error on here, so we're gonna, like, I'm gonna put a note in here for your case, we're gonna call you, and I'm like, Ugh. So, realistically, um, he could call tomorrow. He could call Monday. Realistically, I'm not expecting a call until at least Tuesday. Um, if I'm lucky, he'll call Monday. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna figure out what the hell is going on with all of this, because uh, I was, until this month, I was getting $192 a month, which is a little under $50 a week, um, which is wonderful. That's great. That is an excellent food budget. Uh, but like I said, I've got, um, I've got a soy allergy, and that is really unintuitive to manage. Like, like, who the hell would expect that meat would have soy in it? Like, you know, there are, your average, like, your, your average brand of canned tuna. I cannot have it, because even if it says packed in water, it contains soy, and I don't like it packed in oil. I, oh god, it's disgusting. Um, it's just, uh, it's so greasy. But, uh, but yeah, your average canned tuna, which is packed in, you know, packed in water, your Starkist, your Kroger branded stuff even, uh, it says packed in water. It's actually packed in a broth, and the broth is made with soybeans. I don't know why this is somehow cheaper than just straight up water, but that's what they do. You turn around to the back of the label, it will say contains soy. So, I can't have cans of tuna. I can't have your average brand of sliced bread. Like, you go to Kroger, and you see the Kroger brand bread. It's like two for three dollars. 
you know, your sliced whole whole wheat, which is like, you know, it's just brown. Um, your whole wheat sliced bread, two for three dollars. And I can't have it because it contains um, soy flour and or soy lecithin, which soy lecithin is the protein associated with the soy intolerance and allergy. So, so yeah, um, $106 a month. That is approximately $25 a week for a grocery budget. Um, the average loaf of bread for me is about $4. Um, I've recently discovered the, uh, the Koppelingers, 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 K-O-E-P, yeah, so I've noticed that they've got this at Kroger for like two fifty a loaf, approximately, depending on whether or not it's on sale this week or something. Um, so that, yeah, two fifty. that's still like a dollar more than your average brand of sliced bread. Like I said, you know, the, the Kroger branded uh, loaves, like, you know, even their, you know, high-end private selection um, store brand, that's still like, that's two dollars, and that's two fifty. So, yeah, I'm paying, I'm paying more for my food because I have an allergy. An allergy that is absolutely bonkers to try and manage because soy is a heavily subsidized food crop in the United States, so they put it in damn near everything to keep it cheaper. So, yeah, like, I get excited. I get excited when I go to the food pantry and there's something like this, which is just like, it's bread. It's a loaf of bread. It is a loaf of sliced bread. Yes, it is a fancy pants loaf of sliced bread. But I I get excited when I see bread I can eat. Like, I mean, and I I don't I'm not even I don't even have celiac disease, right? So like I can have all the wheat I want, but I have to have it in without soy in it. So, yeah, like, you know, my, my breakfast is, like, coffee with half and half, um, glass of almond milk to, uh, um, glass of almond milk to take, um, my, uh, my fiberol with, I mix it in there just cause, um, you know, it, yeah, it's, like, tasteless and everything, but it's, like, I can still taste it, and I taste it less mixed with almond milk. Fair enough. And then, um, cranberry juice that I take my pills with. And once in a while I'll have toast. Not all the time, but still, it's like right there for the week. We've got, let's see, if I get the store branded cranberry juice, that's $2. Um, and yeah, I use the, uh, the, I have, I use the, uh, the half size, the juice glasses. So about four ounces, uh, even though it says recommended serving size, eight ounces, but it's like, this is really all you need. Juice is the dessert of breakfast, because it is so full of sugar. But that's another story for another time. So yeah, uh, this is your traditional size juice glass. Um, and so yeah, about four ounces, and then your eight ounce jam jar glass <laughs> of my almond milk, which up to about here is almost exactly eight ounces. I think it's a little bit under, but... Um, so yeah, right there, like, tightly controlled portions, just, <laughs> you know, to stretch things out. So, yeah, you know, your average thing of cranberry juice, I think it recommends, I think it says it's got, like, what, like, eight servings in it, so I can get about 16 out servings out of it, out of your average, um, bottle of cranberry juice. So, yeah, let's say a little about over two weeks, so about a dollar a week for brec for my, uh, my juice, um, almond milk doesn't last quite as long. That is, you know, I, I pretty much stick with the recommended serving size there. So that's about, yeah, I think also about eight servings per half gallon. So that is a little under $3 for the Kroger branded almond milk. So yeah, let's just say $3 for that for a week because eight servings is barely more than seven, right? And then, uh, coffee... I'm not quite sure how, um, I'm not quite sure how long my coffee lasts me. I don't have that down to a science yet, but, uh, Trader Joe's has some of the best prices on coffee in the area, so, uh, I want to say I get a new can, biggest possible one I can, um, and I grind it there at the store just to save me some time in the morning, 
so that is, I want to say about $5, and I go through one, let's see, um, the biggest can, when I can get that, that's about, that's about a good, um, three or four weeks, and yes, I know, coffee snobs would be like, oh my gosh, it's probably stale at that point, I'm like, I don't care, I don't care, it's cheaper, but yeah, like, when I have to, I get the smaller can, that's about $5, and that lasts me a little over a week. So right here we've got, uh, let's say five dollars, let, yeah, let's say five dollars for a can of coffee. Oh, right, and then, um, half and half for my coffee, uh, that's about three dollars a bottle. So, let's see, we've got eight dollars for the coffee every week, uh, plus three dollars for the almond milk, so that's eleven dollars, and then approximately a dollar a week on the cranberry juice. So we've got twelve dollars a week just for breakfast <laughs> twelve dollars a week just for breakfast like there's half of my grocery budget already right there is breakfast and so yeah obviously um twenty five dollars a week you cannot cut it um sure i don't have to have um almond milk with my breakfast um I don't necessarily have to have half and half. I could get that gross powdery stuff. It's disgusting, but I suppose if I absolutely had to. Um, but yeah, still, it's like that, that would barely cut it, you know, that would barely take my budget down any. Um, you know, half and half is not the reason I'm broke, right? <laughs> like, you know, like, sure, yeah, like I said, I could get the gross powdered shit, but. I know, like, that is not the reason I'm broke. Like, half and half is not the reason I'm broke, <laughs> right? Just, like, let's just be real. Half and half is not why I'm broke. I'm disabled, and I live in a country that thinks that, you know, this is an acceptable budget for somebody who is disabled and unable to work a normal job. So, yeah, yeah. So, uh... So, yeah, I've, uh, um, I might put an Amazon, uh, wish list below, um, but, uh, for, um, what's it called? Uh, it's gonna have, a uh, coupon, or not coupons, uh, gift cards for, um, Whole Foods, just because they don't offer gift cards for Kroger or Fresh Time Farmer's Market. I go there for produce a lot when I run out of the produce from here. So, uh, yeah, Fresh Time Farmer's Market in, um, yeah, they're just over the city limit, so, like, they're technically an Ipsy address. They've seriously got the best prices on produce, um, so, yeah, that is, uh, yeah, that's where I tend to get my produce when I can, um, ideally on Wednesday when their sale prices are, an are another, like, 50% off, so, um, so yeah, um, but yeah, as far as that goes, like, if you know how to send me gift cards to, uh, Fresh Time Farmer's Market or, um, or Kroger, um, the Target here has a decent grocery selection, uh, including things that I can have, um, but, you know, it's not, it's not the greatest grocery selection. I don't like to go to Meyer, um, which is Michigan- local, um, chain store. There's a few in other states, but it's, like, surrounding states. Like, I know there's a couple in Wisconsin, and there's a few in Ohio. I think there might be a couple in Indiana and Illinois, but it's, it's a Michigan-based chain, um, started in Grand Rapids. I did a video about how Michigan invented the superstore concept that, you know, Walmart later ripped off and has now become ubiquitous with the concept of the superstore, but it was Meyer that did it first. Um, but yeah, I don't like to go into Meyer. Um, for two reasons. The first would be, um, the first is, yeah, the first is, like, the political reason, because, like, some years ago, I want to say it was, uh, the 20-odd-8 election cycle, there was the, uh, uh, there's an old website, I don't think it exists anymore, last I checked it didn't, uh, buyblue.org or something that, would uh, break down like what corporations gave to which campaigns, and would encourage you to buy from corporate entities that um, gave to the Democratic campaigns. And um, I also checked with the HRC uh, that same election cycle, and 
Um, so Meyer, like pretty much straight up, gave all of their money to the Republican campaign, 20 odd eight, which, yeah, that was McCain. And McCain is one of those guys where, like, I feel bad for him, but that doesn't mean I wanted him president, of course. Like, even if, even if he was, you know, far, I don't know, compared to some Republicans, he was far more moderate. Like, I had respect for him, but that didn't mean I wanted him for president, right? Uh, so, yeah, um... Obviously, being a socialist, uh, Obama's not my ideal candidate, but he was better than the other option, especially with um, Captain Slappy's running mate. I don't know why I just called John McCain Captain Slappy, but it's like, yeah, I feel for what he went through, but that, you know, pity doesn't doesn't win my vote. <laughs> like, you're not getting a pity vote from me. It's like, I, I understand. He went through something horrible. He was disabled for the rest of his life with, the, you know, through, through that. But that doesn't mean he should be president. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I felt, I felt bad. But, uh, so yeah, like, Meyer gave, gives a lot. And it's kind of like an open secret in Michigan, uh, especially the closer you get to Grand Rapids, where the chain began, that, um, that Meyer, um, is owned by, well, the Meyer family. Uh, they're very right-wing fundamentalist Christian, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but yeah, the 2008 election cycle, uh, HRC gave Walmart a better rating for how they treat their LGBT employees than they gave to Meyer. So, <laughs> like, mull on that. So yeah, first there's a sociopolitical reason I don't like to go into Meyer if I can avoid it. Uh, the second reason, everybody from Michigan will understand it is impossible to go into Meyer and come out in under 20 minutes. Like, you can say you're just going in there for a targeted strike. I just need to get bread and cheese. Somehow this takes at least 20 minutes. And it's not just because, you know, like the dairy case, you got to go all the way to the back because that's how they do it. That's, that's just how stores do it. And Kroger started that. But... That's another story for another time. So you have to go all the way to the back. And it's an enormous goddamn store. Um, and then, because they move everything around in the store a lot more than most other grocery stores do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, this This drives me... because, And they do it. They do it. Like, grocery stores, most... Like, Kroger tends to, like, rearrange the aisles approximately every six months. I swear to God, Meyer does it every three to four months. Every three or four months, y you go in, you can't find a goddamn thing except for, like, cheese. And, you know, and even then in the dairy case, it's like, you have no idea exactly where in the dairy case. they Like, you know where the dairy case is. It's in the same place every time. But <laughs> who knows where they're putting cheese this month, right? But yeah, like, Meyer does, does it a lot more frequently than most other grocery store chains do, like Kroger. And they do it so that, you know, you have to go up and down all the aisles and hopefully buy more things that you either A, forgot you needed and, you know, are getting while you're there just, you know, to get it, or B, don't even need, but it's like, oh, hey, this shit's on sale. So yeah, I like to avoid Meyer whenever I can. So I don't like to go into Meyer. Um, if that's where you have a gift card uh, that you want to send, I will accept it, of course, but... Uh, but yeah, I, I don't like going into Meyer just for so many reasons. <laughs> two reasons. Two real reasons. But yeah, uh, Amazon wishlist is below. Uh, I'm expecting, like, I'm really hoping this gets fixed, because this happened one other time before, about three years ago. Um, and I'm not even, like, like, I'm not even talking, like, when I moved back to Ipsy, like, five, six years ago when it got really borked up and I was on like $16 a month in food stamp benefits for like three months. Um, but yeah, this happened one other time a couple years ago, like two, three years ago, this happened one other time. Um, and it got fixed. It got fixed, but it took about a good like two or three weeks to get it fixed. So again, yeah, there's going to be an Amazon wish list below. Uh, feel free to send gift cards like as always, I've got a P.O. box below. I really hate just straight up asking like this. I barely even plug my Patreon in the description box, even though everybody does who has one, and 
I know that the more you plug it, the more people go and look and are therefore more likely to actually, like, consider donating. Yeah, at the very least, consider it, right? <laughs> but yeah, like, I didn't even do that. I didn't even plug the fact that I have music for sale in the description box below on my Bandcamp. I, I, I don't like shilling for myself, but at this point, like I said, um, so yeah, I got my deposit. I thought it was a one-time thing, just because of how vague and lacking in information, this letter that arrived to me, like, on the 7th, like, a good, like, almost a week after I got that $106 deposit, um, because it had no information. I assumed, okay, this is probably just a one-time thing, probably related to the fact that my Medicare just got turned back on, maybe, I don't know, uh, but, you know, I, I should get the deposit on the 19th, like I usually do, but that didn't happen. So, yeah, maybe I did go a little nuts and got some my, myself some fancy mushrooms. Um, like, as in, like, actual mushrooms. Like, uh, where'd they go? Where'd they go? Um, maybe I got myself some fancy mushrooms, but, um, and I did get myself some saffron, but, to be fair, this was on sale for, like, nearly half off. So, yeah. <laughs> when it's like, when it's like two for seven, y you kind of have to. Um, so yeah, I, I might have gone a little bit, not, like I said, I, I assume this was a one-time thing. This letter said nothing about this being a continued thing, so, uh, so yeah. Um, I'm not really expecting anybody to, you know, even, like, tip jar the PayPal link or anything. You know, all that's in the description box. Um, if you were entertained by this and by my ranting, um, feel free to tip jar or whatever. So yeah, I'm going to figure out what I'm doing for lunch, uh, get a hold of my friend Raven who's trying to figure out where I am for game night because even though I thought I made it clear on Facebook, but again, I'm barely on Facebook, so I'm probably not, like, pri being prioritized by the Zuck on her, uh, feed anymore. This is kind of berry flavored. But yeah, it's definitely an infused water, so. Okay. So, yeah, I'm done ranting, and I I had a very, very busy day. I'm gonna go back into the front room, well, I'm gonna put away my produce and meat, and then go back into the front room and argue with this crochet project that I've been arguing with for like three days. This pattern makes no sense. I think I'm doing it right, and then I realize like halfway through like the 11th round, I've messed something up brutally, and it looks nothing like it's supposed to. What do you say, Nigel? Um, so yeah, um, as they do in YouTube land, uh, hit the like button if you want to, if you liked it, hit the thumbs down if you think I'm absolutely nuts. Um, I'm only 50% nuts. <laughs> I'm, I'm about as nuts as my friend Don, and I think he says he's 60% nuts. Um, I don't know. Well, maybe not quite as nuts as him, but I'm getting there, because we all gotta have goals in life, and... Don is, oh gosh, he's, he's something else. He is something else. So, oh shit, yeah, I gotta, I gotta go chat at him. I haven't chatted at him in a while. Um, or my friend Gavin. I gotta, I gotta talk to people. I gotta talk to people. There's people I haven't talked to in a while, and I've been rambling on far too long, and, uh, so yeah, um, like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have more dollars than cents, feel free to donate to my Patreon, or send me a gift card for, like, I don't know, Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or some shit like that, because I have food allergies, and the Michigan DHS office is screwing with me. You know, hit the like, hit the subscribe, um, feel free to donate or whatever, um, coming soon is going to be a series about, um, denim care and jeans and various tips and tricks for crap and stuff with your denims and all of that. And one of these days I'm going to get around to finishing my series, um, about, uh, 
gothic metal and the enigma of Field to the Nephilim, and, uh, <laughs> and I need to do a couple of reviews of Raythu books, because I've now finished a second one, and I still haven't gotten the review videos done. All right. I'm done. I, for real this time. This has gone on way too long. I've fooled around long enough. Bats and kisses, and take care of yourselves, and slam!